Let's talk about the law of mass action for semiconductors in this video. So this sounds like a very important law, law of mass action for semiconductors. So let me state first what it implies and you know then we'll derive it using uh, using a couple of approaches so what this law of mass action states is that the number of electrons that you have in your conduction band multiplied by the number of holes you have in your valence band that's a constant which just depends upon the temperature so if this is a constant i can equate it to the case when i have an intrinsic semiconductor and in this case i can have and i which is the number of electrons in my intrinsic semiconductor multiplied by the number of holes in my intrinsic semiconductor and since both of them are equal this is just equivalent to ni square or in another way to state this law is that the number of electrons and the number of holes the concentration of those when multiplied is equal to the intrinsic square of the intrinsic carrier density so this is a very important law and i want to use uh, uh, more than one approach to to arrive at this uh, arrive at this uh, conclusion so you know stop or pause this video if if you if you think if you have already heard about this term law of mass action so if you have heard about law of mass action that you know just stop and just think about or google where you have heard it before so another place where you might have heard of uh, law of mass action is when you were taking a, a freshman chemistry or, or, uh, or chemistry in your high school and over there when this law of mass action is typically applied to this let's say you have a reaction between compound A and B and they react to form C and D. So the rate of this forward reaction this is given now by this rate of the forward reaction this is proportional to the amount of species A and it's also proportional to the amount you have or the concentration you have of of, of species B and these are you know, they, they could be you know multiplied by different exponent but this is in general what is known as the law of mass action so let me try to draw an analogy of how we can apply the same law and you know what would be the corresponding reactions if you have a semiconductor so if you have a semiconductor let me draw the conduction and the valence band of a semiconductor so you have a semiconductor like this so the two 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 equivalent or you know two opposing reactions that we can think of are generation and recombination so electrons which are present in the valence band they can thermalize or you know they can gain enough energy to move over to the conduction band so when that happens they will essentially move over to the to the conduction band and become these conduction electrons and at the same time that would create a hole in the valence band and so this is called the process of generation and the reverse process is, is that if you have sufficient number of electrons in your conduction band and holes in your valence band this conduction band electron can now recombine with this uh, hole present in the valence band so there could be this process happening when this when this electron combines with this hole and it's uh, it's annihilates this electron and hole pair and then pro that process is called recombination so these are two opposing processes which will be opposing reactions which will be happening if you have a semiconductor now the rate of generation it's essentially just depends upon the temperature because you have sufficient number of uh, electrons present in the valence band and if you have high enough temperature they can go over and become conduction band electrons so this rate is just a function of temperature and the recombination rate on the other hand it's uh, it depends upon the number of electrons you have and the number of holes you have so the more the number of electrons you have and more the number of holes you have it would be higher or the rate or the likelihood that they recombine would be higher because you know they have more electrons have more holes to recombine and similarly holes have more electrons to recombine so this recombination rate it's given by this formula where it's a function of temperature and it's also depends upon the product of the electrons and holes now if i have a semiconductor in steady state so you know i have the semiconductor and uh, 
and you know the things are you know not dynamic i'm not bothering it you know it's sitting on its own so in that case the number of electrons and holes in my system will remain constant and the only way that can happen is if my recombination rate or the way it will happen is if my recombination rate is equal to my generation rate if my generation rate is higher than my recombination rate then my number of carriers will increase similarly if it's a recombination rate is higher than generation rate then i'll have a net decrease in the number of carriers but this is for the case when i'm in steady state so in my steady state the number number of uh, carriers are constant and that uh, that results in the recombination rate being equal to the generation rate so now let's let's equate this let's equate this uh, two terms and let's see what do i get so if i equate my generation and recombination rate what i get is f1 t is equivalent to f2 t multiplied by n and p so let me separate n and p and let me divide the whole thing by f2 so that leaves n and n multiplied by p it comes out to be this function and the only dependence it has is on temperature so if i had an intrinsic semiconductor it would have essentially the same product of n and p because these terms just depend upon temperature so i've derived my formula using you know during this uh, uh, equivalency of law of mass action that in a in a semiconductor the number of uh, electrons multiplied by the number of holes it remains a constant which uh, which just depends upon temperature and this is equivalent to the square of my intrinsic carrier density so the profoundness of of this law will be apparent if we if we you know just put some numbers so what this law is stating say let's say i have a intrinsic semi let's say i have let's take the case of silicon so silicon has an intrinsic carrier density of approximately 10 to power 10 per per centimeter cube so if i if i if i increase the number of electrons in my silicon let's say i increase the number of electrons from uh, I, I increase it by five orders of magnitude so i increase it from 10 to power 10 to 10 to power 15 so what what this would entail by this law of mass action is because my number of electrons multiplied by number of holes this remains constant and in the case of silicon this is 10 to power 20 so if i if i increase increase my number of electrons to 10 to power 15 i'll only have 10 to power 5 holes so if i'm doing if i'm increasing my electrons by five orders of magnitude it's in it's accompanied by a decrease in five orders of magnitude in the concentration of holes so this is now now this is trying to become interesting what is saying that if i increase this then i decrease this and the product of them remains the constant and in the next video i'll i'll look at that another approach which we can use to derive the same law